Bibles to 2 Timothy. Chapter 1. Tonight, I'm going to preach a message on spiritual warfare. And the question I want to start off with, what triggers a satanic attack? What triggers a demonic attack? What triggers unseen evil minions attack on you as a person. I'm going to want you to individualize this message. We could apply it to an individual, the church, so forth. But just apply it to you tonight. That's what I'm going to do for myself. What triggers demonic attacks against you individually or maybe even your family, your church, this ministry. What triggers those attacks? You ever stop and wondered why I believe there's one main answer to those questions. What makes the evil minions in the unseen world so upset, so angry, that they rise up against you, they do everything to resist you and your efforts? Here's the kicker, for the cause of Christ. For the cause of Christ. Some might say, well, didn't God choose me for whatever that calling might be? It could be, do what I do. Preaching at a church, being a pastor at church, or supporting one that does. And hopefully right in the divine the word. I tell you one thing, if that pastor or preacher is right in the word and you support that person, you're going to get attacked too. With intensity. But someone asks, well if I'm in God's will, if God chose me, why am I experiencing so many of these difficulties, so much hardship and afflictions? if I'm carrying out the calling he has in my life and I'm only referring to what is the most important calling things done for the cause of Christ I'm not discounting family here like some might say you're responsible for raising your children children to be warriors of Jesus Christ fellow soldiers eventually. That is a tremendous calling. It's underrated. If your parents should be given that responsibility, do it in the best ability you can. And make sure as they grow up, they learn how to rightly divide the Word of God also. All the other stuff will fall in place. Their relationship with God is the most important thing that you can instruct them on. Everything else will fit in eventually. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. Verse 11 reads, Whereunto I am appointed, I want you to personalize this now, 
a preacher and an apostle. You might not be a preacher, you not, might be an apostle, but personalize it to your calling. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. In the next verse, Paul gives us an insight into what triggers these evil minion in the unseen world attacks. Because he says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Highlight those words. For the which cause I also suffer these things. So let's read all two verses here. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause I also suffer these things. Now Paul mentions his calling, and you're personalizing it tonight for yourself. He mentions his specific, specific calling in the body of Christ for him. And he affirms to us, that he was called, and not just called, he also was appointed to be, in this case, an apostle, or a preacher, and a teacher to the Gentiles. Then I want you to notice something here. He immediately follows, because we just read it, by saying, For which cause I also suffer these things. Verse 11 tells us, what God appointed him to be and what God appointed him to do. And the follow-up verse in verse 12 was Paul's explanation for all the kakapateo in his life. Kakapateo is the Greek word for hardships, afflictions. All the difficulties that he encountered over the years. What is Paul saying here? He's saying, because I am doing things for the cause of Christ, as an apostle, as a teacher, as a preacher, I am rightly dividing the word out there. I'm establishing churches. I'm establishing disciples to establish churches. I'm establishing lay people to support the ones that are in churches and its leaders. And because of this, for the which cause I also suffer these things. What things? Hardships, afflictions, the difficulties of life that are thrown at you with the intensity of evil minions in the unseen world to cause anyone to quit. Now, troubles come, afflictions come, whether you're a Christian or not. That's just what sin started 6,000 years ago. And it's complicated everyone's life, to say the least, the last, last six millenniums. But when you become a Christian, and you're doing things that get the evil minions' attentions, attention, get ready for the hardships, get ready for the afflictions, because they're coming. And they're coming waves. Why? Why do they keep coming with intensity to cause you to break? To cause you to give up? To cause you to quit? I had enough of this. It was easier being a non-Christian. That's their goal, is to break you. Why was Paul under attack? Why did Paul made the point with the follow-up statement, for the which cause I also suffered a thing? What cause? Getting the word out. I told you to individualize that for you, whatever you're experiencing in life. And the reason why you're experiencing it, because Satan doesn't like what you're doing. 
and who you are associated with that turn this world upside down. You don't think Satan was terrified of Paul? In the New Testament, we don't run from Satan. God has given us spiritual armor to not only resist him, but to defeat him. Satan was terrified with Paul's calling. And that was the reason Paul was continuously being attacked by Satan and his minions. The devil was fearful of the progress Paul was making. The devil was fearful of the progress Paul would make if he had no opposition. Just think, if faith coming by hearing didn't have no opposition. Just think and personalize it for yourself. What you could already accomplished in your mindset, the way you view things, if you didn't have no opposition from the unseen minions of this evil world. It was like Paul was saying, if you want to know why I suffer, if you don't want to know why I go through all these things during the course of my journey, the course of my ministry, it's because I am appointed as a preacher and apostle, as a teacher of the Gentiles. All these things are happening to me because I'm doing something for the cause of Christ. I'm causing others to inherit the land. And the land in this case is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus saves. Faith plus nothing. We, as a unit, if you're associated with this ministry, will be always under attack. Because not only because we know the truth, but we take it one step further. Further, we spread the truth. And Satan isn't like that spreading process. Just imagine how terrified Satan was. Just think about it. Satan was terrified of what would happen if Paul operated a hundred percent without opposition. He could operate 100% in this calling. Just think of all the unbelievable things that he do for the cause of Christ in the face of such opposition that he experienced. You make, it makes you stop and wonder the kind of gospel advance, advancements that would have taken place even in Paul's day if there was no opposition. Listen, I'm no Paul, but I've experienced it so many times. I'll be all gung-ho, full of energy, full of stamina, we're about to start something in the ministry. I finally could dedicate some time to it. I was determined that, okay, we're going to progress in what we're trying to accomplish here. That's going to require my time to sit down with people, to figure it out, to implement it. And before you know it, something hits us sideways and so distracts us. To the point that we don't even have the opportunity to take one step further in the plans that were being made and the plans that were starting to establish itself when we could dedicate some time to it. And it zaps your energy. That you got to pull your energy away for something that's for the cause of Christ because of some other cock of a tail that now has inserted itself 
and taking the taking my time and others' time to stop and deal with it. And many times, so what interrupt what happens here on an ongoing basis? Those attacks are not from people, pawns that the evil minions use. It's from the unseen world. They're using human pawns to inflict as much damage that they can to slow the progress down of what we're doing here. Now, like I said, I want you to apply this in your life. I'm sure you could come up with example after example how you've been hit sideways and it's taking you off what you were planning to do for the cause of Christ. You were planning, I'll give you a really simple example, you are planning to send $100. You set that $100 aside, boom, something comes in, unexpected. You never thought in a million years that something would happen that requires now that that $100 be taken away for you to even keep on existing. Now I'm giving you a small total probably, it could be smaller even than that or even much larger. But you get the drift of what I'm trying to communicate, I'm sure. Just think of all the gospel advancement that Paul would have made without opposition. Satan and his evil minions threw everything, put every obstacle in front of Paul for one purpose. I don't think he even, he even believed any longer after a certain amount of time that went by that he could stop Paul. But he sure wanted to slow him down. He sure tried to discredit him time and time again. He destroyed friendships. And if he could, he would kill him. You don't think Satan, the devil, hated the call on Paul's life? So why was Paul never defeated? That's the next question we have to ask. Why was Paul never defeated? Because he made a decision. He made a decision. I'm on the board, so if you might want to go on it. He made a decision, number one. You put it on the board. He decided he would not stop. He decided that he would not give up. Until he he ha, excuse me he apprehended for which Christ Jesus had apprehended him for. Let's let's just go to the scripture. Philippians. I guess my board is not working. Am I surprised? No. Am I going to get angry over it? No. This was tested. I sat here and tested this just before we went live. But now it's not working. There is nothing that we put our hands on. There's not some opposition. And I saw, I have seen Year after year, that opposition and the intensity of the attacks just increasing. Why do you think I get so frustrated when people don't communicate? You don't realize how important it is. Not only to me, but the ones behind the scenes here. 
that you're there, you're praying, you're communicating, you're talking to God to pave the way so this word gets out. Amongst many other things you could be doing. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Paul was never defeated because, one, he made a decision. Write that down. Number one, he made a decision. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Verse 12 reads, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am, app I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Of Christ Jesus. Paul decided he would not give up. There was no stopping until he apprehended that for which Christ Jesus had apprehended him to complete. Just think of that mindset. The next time you feel like quitting, the next time you just feel like stopping for a while till things calm down. Maybe Satan takes a vacation and goes deal vacation from you and goes deal with someone else. Paul made a decision that he would not give up until he apprehended that for which Christ Jesus had apprehend him, apprehended him for. The only way you're going to have victory over this continuous attacks by the unseen minions and have some success to achieve everything that God's called you to do and be a part of is to be determined that you're never going to stop, you're never going to quit until what He has commissioned you to do is completed. You have to accomplish what He has called and chosen you to do. It's as simple as that. And the next thing, I'm going to write down here anyway, even though I know it's not working, is determination. Number two, write that down. Determination. That is an important factor in finishing your race of faith. The first one, decision. The second one is determination. Now, I understand you're not going to be able to do this without the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've preached enough on that, that the ones that have been around long enough know where I'm coming from. Especially where I, what I'm going to say. To, because it's hardly a, seems like a service that goes by where I don't aggravate someone by what I say. But if you have ears to hear, you'll see the truth of the matter. No one could achieve what God has called them to do, what God has chosen them to do, without the power of the Holy Spirit that's in you. But, and it's a big but, the power, now listen closely to me, because I'll be taking... I'll be, my words will be taken out of context. I guarantee you it will. But the power of the Holy Spirit is not enough. It's just not. For that Holy Spirit force that's in us to be effective it has to be inside of a person. It must be in the person who is committed. And that's number three. Committed. God's power work in people who have resolve. Let's make that number four. It works through people 
who have committed and made the decision that they will never turn back. It's not an option until what God has chosen you to do is finished. And let me tell you, friend, God takes pleasure in people who are steadfast, in people who are unmoving in their convictions. I also believe He takes pleasure in people who have the stamina and the spunk to hold on to that vision, that calling that God puts in their hearts. He has a purpose for all of us. That purpose may have many branches, but it all needs to be completed. What He's assigned to us to complete. He also likes tenacious people, die-hard people, die-hard to their commitment. He takes pleasure in all those things. It's sad when you hear people that they just didn't make it all the way to the finish line. Most of the time, 99% of the time, is because they were not totally committed to what God, to what God has assigned them to, to accomplish. It's that simple. Don't try to complicate it. Well, they gave it their best shot. Yeah, obviously their best shot, they didn't have their heart into it. They weren't diehards. And that's why they didn't make it to the finish line. And what God's chosen what to do. Now I'm not talking, now I want to make something very clear here. I'm not referring to salvation here. That's a whole other subject matter. I'm talking about what happens in your disciple journey. Satan is constantly, Satan's evil unseen minions are constantly trying to knock us out of the race. But let me tell you something right now, and I want to make sure it's clear to you. The only one who can decide to quit is you, is me. Don't tell me the devil made me do it. The devil threw the oppositions for you to hopefully do it. But you made a decision. You decided to quit. You decided to give up. Satan can't make us quit. That choice is in our hands. And only we can make that. Now, on the other hand, if you do make the decision to stay in the fight of faith and slug it out with the Holy Spirit power of God in you and at your side, you can do exactly what God has called you to do and cross that finish line saying, I finished it. I finished it. But you better have a rock-solid, hardcore decision to do it. And to keep on doing it. And keep on doing it. And keep on doing it until it's finished. And I said in the beginning, God will dress you with the Holy Spirit power. He knows how to fit us for what He wants us to wear to complete the job. And He will give us the, the tools to accomplish what He has chosen for us to do. Go to Colossians. This is the last verse. Chapter... Well, maybe not I want to go there. I'll go to chapter 1. Verse... 29. 
Let's read it. Whereunto I also labor, striving, highlight that word, according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. I just said that he will dress us in the right attire and give us the right tools to finish the job. Why? Because he works mightily in those who keep striving towards that goal. What God has chosen to do. But I want you to take a look at this. Wherefore, whereunto I also labor, striving. You know what that... If you were to break down all the Greek here in this verse, this how it should be read. Wherefore, I also labor, write this down, fighting with faith against the opposition. When you break that striving word in the surrounding context, this is how it should read. Were unto I also labor, fighting with faith against the opposition, according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. That's powerful, friends. One more time. Wherefore I also labor, fighting with faith against the opposition, according to his working, according to what he's chosen us to do, which worketh in me mightily. The requirement to receive this kind of power is to make a decision to never draw back. I'm out of time. So, and this is what qualifies you to receive that unbelievable supernatural flow of God's power, the Holy Spirit in you. If you make a lesser choice, I can guarantee you never will fulfill your God-given purpose. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. You got it? If you do, I want to hear from you.